Hello, this is Mr. Kays. We are on 24.4a. 24.4a. We've been looking at revolution and the spread of revolution throughout Europe, but how about revolution in the arts? Revolution in the arts as far as paintings, music, literature. We're going to discuss that. In the arts, you have the romantic movement during this time. The romantic movement. Romanticism was movement that show, it was a movement that showed interest in nature, interest in nature, and the feelings of the individual, the feelings of the individual. It showed deep interest in the individual. Duh, okay. It's kind of redundant, but put it down. It showed deep interest in the individual. One such poet was Lord Byron. If you remember, he was the British poet that went down to Greece. So, for Lord Byron, you could put down British poet who fought for freedom of Greece. He fought for freedom of Greece. He was in love with classic Greek culture. And when the time came for Greece to break away from the Ottomans, he gave away his fortune to the Greek cause and even signed up to be a soldier. And instead of dying on the battlefield, he died, I think, of pneumonia. But we got to give a shout out to Lord Byron as a romantic poet. Jakob and Wilhelm Grimm, yep, the brothers Grimm, they collected fairy tales. They collected fairy tales. And they concentrated on history and national pride. History and national pride. So Grimm's fairy tales have that element of love for the land, love of nature, and the feelings of the individual. They were nationalists, for sure. Emily Bronte wrote a book called Wuthering Heights, in which you have beauty and mystery of the wind-swept moors. Wind-swept moors. What's a moor? Uh, it's kind of like a, a field. M-O-O-R-S of Northern England. Beauty and mystery of the wind-swept moors of Northern England. Yes, it's a love story between a wealthy person and a person of low status. Kind of like uh, Romeo and Juliet, set on the, the moors or the highlands of northern England. All right, Romanticism in England, or in uh, literature. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, he wrote The Sorrows of Young Werther. The Sorrows of Young Werther. W-E-R-T-H-E-R. In it, he talked about love and uh, struggle and young Werther. Um, it's an entertaining story because you want to know what happens to the dude next. Okay, we got it. Victor Hugo, you might have known, wrote Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. He was a Frenchman. And in it, he talks about the revolutionary spirit, because the revolution was going on during this time, revolutionary spirit and struggles of the individual versus hostility. The struggle of individual versus hostility. If you know the story of Les Miserables, it's Jean Valjean struggling against um, people that don't think that ex-convicts can make it in the world. They'll always be ex -con they'll always be bad people. And then for the Hunchback of Notre Dame, it's the struggle against the hostility of people that think he's a monster. All right. Some romantic writers emphasized emotion, love of nature, history, individualism, while others focused on the mysterious, the exotic, and the horrifying. Say it again. Emotion, love of nature, history, and individualism, while others focus on the mysterious, the exotic, and the horrifying. The Gothic novel was definitely horror. It was a horror story as a form that became hugely popular. The Gothic horror story was a form that became hugely popular. They were filled with fearful, violent, supernatural events. Fearful, violent, supernatural events. Let me give you an example. Mary Shelley, an English author, wrote Frankenstein. 
it's a story of a monster created from dead humans. It's a monster created from dead humans. Well, that was a horror story for sure. Romantic composers. They're going to emphasize emotion. Romantic composers, the greatest of whom was Beethoven, B-E-E-T-H-O-V-E-N. Beethoven. Uh, he's known for the Ninth Symphony. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Other composers include Robert Schumann with his Surprise Symphony. Surprise Symphony. Felix Mendelssohn, he was a Jew. He's a Jew. And he drew from Shakespeare for his music. He drew from Shakespeare. Frederick Chopin wrote piano concertos, C-O-N-C-E-R-T-O-S, piano concertos. And Franz Liszt was a composer and pianist. He made a lot of money, and you could consider him a rock star of his day. He was popular and wealthy. Composer and pianist, made a lot of money, and became a rock star. Yeah, you can put that down. Well, next time, we're going to be looking at a shift from uh, romanticism to realism. This is Mr. K's with 24.4A signing off.